Hey, hello students. Welcome to part two of the separation of variables uh, video series. Um, remember that in this video we're going to solve this initial val boundary value problem which is also known as an IBVP and um, we have uh, homogeneous boundary conditions and we have an initial condition here um, where I'm just going to describe it by some generic function f, and um, we'll um, I'll tell you how to treat this in uh, uh, the last part of the video. Okay, so um, recall that we are expecting a linear combination of solutions, uh, and that's just a fancy way of saying we're going to look for a um, series solution um, where we're going to sum up um, a bunch of solutions that actually satisfy this um, this boundary value problem. And that, and those uh, sums of solutions will have coefficients, and um, whenever you have coefficients of uh, with uh, multiply by functions and you add them all together, we call that a linear combination. Um, all right, so we're going to assume that the solution has this separable form. It's going to be um, all the um, x content in one function and all the time content in another function, and we're going to multiply them together. You may ask, you know, why would we assume that? Um, well, we're just going to make that assumption at first and proceed formally and just say okay let's see what happens when we do this uh, it turns out it's the right thing to do um, physically you could actually expect that to be the case because remember the um, if you look at the equation all the t derivative contents on the left side all the spatial derivative contents is on the right side and um, they do interact with one another and depend upon one another and um, if the x has um, a certain shape or concavity, um, that's going to impact um, the t content as to whether or not it's going to increase or decrease. So in that regard, one might expect that you would have a separable form. Um, so uh, you could either buy that argument or not, um, or you can just say, well, let's just proceed and see if this works. Okay, I'm going to suppress the variables, so um, I'll go back here. So instead of having um, uh, you know, always writing x of x and t of t. Uh, I'm just going to write this as x times t, uh, you know, capital X times capital T, and we'll just keep in mind that x is a function of x and t is a function of t. Okay, so the first thing you do is you take the um, u is equal to x t and you plug it into the PDE and um, you take the derivatives. Now, since on the left hand side you're taking the derivative with respect to time um, it, o it treats the x as a constant and uh, only takes the derivative with respect to time of the t variable now we're going to denote that that derivative with respect to time with um, this uh, with this dot okay so that dot operator that is our derivative with respect to time and that's to distinguish it from the primes because if I made a prime on the left hand side you couldn't tell is that a derivative with respect to time or a derivative with respect to space and the double primes or the prime notation that'll be our derivative with respect to x or you know our second derivative with respect to x okay notice that um, as I mentioned in uh, the first video that separation of variables um, is going to change the PDE into um, a, a system essentially of ODEs and we have two independent variables so that means we're going to end up with two ODEs. Okay I'm going to switch platforms now and continue with the problem here. So uh, keep in mind that we have um, uh, this uh, this PDE and um, it's now been transformed into this uh, set of ODEs. Okay so here's our boundary value problem and here is uh, on the uh, on the right and here is our um, uh, separation of variables where we left off okay so the first thing we do is we just assume that we don't have the zero solution why that does satisfy the PDE and does satisfy the boundary conditions it may not necessarily satisfy the initial condition so let's just assume our solution is not zero since it's not zero we're going to divide by it and once we divide by it, uh, of course, we will simplify, and we get this um, t dot over t equals the diffusivity times x double prime over x. And notice that on the left-hand side, we have all derivatives with respect to t are equal to something where we have all derivatives with respect to x. Now, there's only one way that that can happen, and that is if both of those are equal to a constant. 
Now, you have to think about that, okay, for a moment, and they might take some time to sink in, but um, I'll just repeat what I said earlier. You have all derivatives with respect to t on this side happens to be equal to something that has only derivatives with respect to x. The only way that that's going to be true is if these if, if these both are equal to some kind of constant. Um, because you're changing with respect to t here, you're changing with respect to x, and if those changes are equal to each other, they can't be changing, right? Because you can't have a change with respect to time equal to a change with respect to x. So that means these changes must be constant. So you get this set of ODEs now. I'm going to move the diffusivity over to the t variable here. And now, um, what I mentioned earlier about somehow the diffusivity relating to a rate um, will hopefully start to sink in. It's now um, has something to do with the uh, time change. And then we have this ODE over here uh, with rec space. Uh, I'm going to focus on the time uh, change here, the t dot over dt equals lambda. And uh, you just uh, we can leave that as in that form and just do a separation of variables uh, ODE style. And you get that t is equal to um, some exponential function. Now, d is greater than 0, and we don't want our solution to blow up. So what I've x'd out there is t going off to infinity. We don't want if we don't want that to happen physically, we don't want our temperature to go off to infinity, then we have to make some assumptions about that lambda. And we're going to assume that that lambda is less than zero. And the way to ensure that is I'm going to set lambda equal to minus mu squared. Okay. Now that is going to set us up for the other ODE, and that is the spatial um, variation. So I have lambda is equal to minus mu squared. And uh, so now I have the... Um, um, this ODE here um, and uh, so now when I solve that ODE I'm gonna move um, just gonna simplify that and so I'm gonna move that X over to the right hand side and then move everything over so it's on the left hand side and uh, you know how to solve that ODE um, I'll just remind you so you know you can use characteristic equation and you get R is equal to plus or minus I mu and then you get these complex exponentials but you can write that as a sum of a cosine and plus sine Recall that if you expand this out using um, Euler's formula, then um, when you add these together, you can factor out the cosine, and um, you'd have C1 over C2. You'd have two of them. You'd have to divide by two. So you set your constants equal to C, C1 tilde plus C2 tilde over two. And then similarly, you'd have to get rid of the I, so you divide by 2I. And here you'd be subtracting C, C2 tilde minus C1 tilde. So um, I've done this in previous videos. I'm just reminding you of that's why this... Uh, form the solution holds. Um, now I'm going to implement the boundary conditions so I get c1 is equal to 0 because if I plug a 0 into cosine I get 1. If I plug a 0 into the sine I get 0 and the only thing that survives is the c1 but this boundary condition here um, indicates that um, that uh, that the, the function is equal to 0 so that means that c1 is equal to 0. So notice that means we only end up with a sine term. So I have x1 that's uh, this boundary condition here is uh, equal to zero so that means I have c2 times sine is equal to zero but I don't want my solutions to be zero so um, I'm gonna assume that c2 is not equal to zero and that means I'm gonna end up with I can't solve for that arbitrary constant so I'm gonna end up with an infinity um, of solutions um, mu equal to integer multiples of pi will satisfy that result and uh, yes I will cross out that n equals zero in a moment um, but I'm just indicating that that is possible. I could also made it made it negative um, as well, but um, let's just stick with positive integers for the moment. And so if I combine um, this solution here and uh, this result here, and I make um, mu equal n pi, then I get um, one of the solutions that satisfies the PDE is this arbitrary constant. Now it's all dependent upon n. Um, e to the minus d. Now look, that d, that diffusivity shows up in the uh, rate of decay. And then I multiply that by a sign. And you might, and now if I add all these together, you'll recognize we have a Fourier sine series where the um, coefficient is the um, Fourier transform. Um, now if you're wondering where this 2 comes from, you might f think of this as a minus L to L. If you center it at 1 half, then if you go up one half you get to one if you go to minus one half that takes you down to zero and then one over one half which is one over l gives you a two and that is your Fourier series solution all right good luck